Abshenyi. Ashe. Dumelang. Kuyamora. Good morning and welcome to the morning, morning cappuccino with the twins. Yeah, and Dumi. Now, we have so much planned for March. Now, save the dates. Could you tell us what's going on on the 5th? And the fifth is volunteer night. And today we have our whole we have communion. Please get your symbols ready because it's gonna get amazing. What's happening on the tenth? Water baptism. And on the eleventh, holy ba holy spirit baptism. And on the eighteenth. On the eighteenth is our pathway course, is and it not? It is. It's gonna be on the twenty-sixth at the table. What's happening on the twenty-ninth? Easter weekend. So could you tell us what's going on this Easter weekend? Oh, I'm so excited. It's our journey to redemption. Please come through and join us. It's so exciting. So can you please tell us what our service times are? So we have three morning services and we have one evening services at 5 p.m. Please come through and join us. I'm so excited to announce for the little ones. Get excited. It's Power Kids. It's open. Throughout all Sunday services. So what's happening on a Friday? Do we need prayer? We obviously do. It our is our morning prayers. Every Friday at 6 a.m. You can join us online. Or, or physically. Or on our radio station. Now, what's happening on a Friday evening? Mountain Movers. Youth, come join us. Teenagers from the age of? 13 to 19. So it's happening. What are the times for Mountain Movers? From 7 to 9. Okay. Now what what can we do to get jamming on a Sunday? So we have our Sunday playlist, which you can get via YT Music, Apple Music, or Spotify. I can ready to get jammed. Now jamming. Sorry. The word of the day is Romans 5 verse 1. Therefore, since we've been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Christ our Lord has done for us. So this is a great way to start the week to remind us that our Lord and Savior has died for us on the cross. So we can be free, so we can make so we can be made right by God. This is a great way for us to remember the love that Jesus the Lord has for us, the grace that we are so so much given by our Lord. So Amen. please take communion with us as we prepare our bread and our wine. Let's partake. Thank you. We are continuing, if you've missed last week, uh, we spoke about the art of simplicity, something that is uh, certainly found in the Bible, and yet it is so rare, especially in the suburban church in South Africa, in the West, if you go to big cities, this has become a lost art, the art of simplicity. And last week, I would have shocked you, for those that, uh, if you were not here, you would have heard that I spoke about the last three and a half years of Jesus' life, and I actually shocked you by telling you that, and uh, we looked at a scripture where Jesus said, you know, um, foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. For the last three and a half years, and we don't talk like this in the church because it's, it's not polite, but it certainly was true. For the last three and a half years of Jesus' life, he was so focused on what he needed to do for God that he was a homeless person. He had no home. And, and the point of what we spoke about last week is be careful not to complicate your life to the point where you start to miss what God wants to do with you, where you start to miss what your family wants to do with you, you're getting to a level of complexity. And I want to tell you something. It is the spirit of this age that we live in. When you meet people and they're successful and they're going somewhere, you say, how are you doing, John, Peter, Sipo? And the answer will be, oh, I'm doing so well. It's going well with me. I'm just so very, very busy, 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 busy. And they do that with their head. They go, busy, busy, busy. I'm so busy, man. Hey? Like, I'm so busy. And it's like a badge of honor that we wear. But we notice that Jesus never lived like that. And we looked at Matthew 6, where it says, Seek ye first, and we're going to look at it again today. The lens, if you want to live for God, the lens for living this life of simplicity is seek first the kingdom of God. Everything else filters through that lens. Not the lens your boss has for you. Not the lens the world has for you. 
the lens that God looks at your life with, and you say, Lord, is this good and proper for me? Listen to what Richard Foster writes. We're going to look at a couple of things he said. Simplicity, the discipline of simplicity found in the Scriptures, the inward reality of a single-hearted focus upon God and His kingdom, which will result in an outward life of modesty, openness, unpretentiousness. How's that for a word? Unpretentiousness. Unpretentiousness. Say that quickly. Unpretentiousness. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Unpretentiousness, which disciplines our hunger, listen to this, for status, for glamour, and for luxury. Now, I'm not saying you can't have glamour. I'm not saying you can't have luxury. But be careful. When your life moves to a level where it's always about glamour, it's always about luxury, it's always about that stuff, and you start to miss God. Remember, we learned last week, the more things you own in this life, the more those things own you. Because that weed eater that we spoke about last week in the garage that has never been used, somewhere in the back of your mind and heart, you're thinking one day, in the year 2035, if Jesus does not come back, I will use the weed eater to go and cut the grass. And yet it is still there since the year 2000 when they told you the Y2K bug was coming. And then it didn't and you bought a weed eater because you thought, I will defend my house with a weed eater. And you've never used that weed eater, but it's there. And in your heart and mind, you know it's there. We spoke about ladies' clothing. See, all the men going, aha, pasta. Tell the ladies. Here's three heart attributes, three heart characteristics, also by Richard Foster, that we should consider when we want to move towards a life of simplicity. Number one, if what we have we can receive as a gift from God, this is a very good thing, versus we have gotten it. There's a, there's a, that's a very important thing. If what we have, we can understand as a gift from God, instead of us saying, I am the one who has gotten it. Yes, I know you've worked for it. Yes, I know you've bought it. Yes, I know you went to go and look for it. I understand that. But if you would change the mindset and heart set of everything I have in life is grace. Everything I own, everything I have is a gift from God to me. It's not something that I have worked for, therefore it belongs to me and me alone. Listen to this. God cares for what we have versus we then need to care for what we have. So once I understand that it is a gift from God, I also understand it is God that will help me look after it. Versus me looking after it because I am the one who got it. It's very important. These, these are subtle changes in the heart. But the way you look at your life, it changes the direction of your life. What we have can be shared with others when it is clearly right and good. Did you hear that? When what we have can be shared with others when it is clearly right and good. What about all those clothes that you've never worn yet you've bought? Those shoes that are still in their shoe boxes, all those power tools that have never been opened, all that jewelry, all those fancy watches. We can go on and on and on and on. Uh, all these things that we hoard. When God says, listen, you're never going to use that. But there is a family down the road that does not have one plate on its table. I think you can go bless them with that dish with that whole box set of dishes, you can do it. And you're going, no, 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 God, there will be a day. There will be a day. I don't know when that day is, my brother and my sister, but there will be a day. It will be a Christmas day or an Easter or a New Year's, but there will be a day. You haven't had that day for 20 years, but you want that day. Let's go to Scripture this morning. 
Again, simplicity and purity of heart gives us deep purpose. Matthew 6.33, seek first the kingdom of God. Simplicity starts with us looking at life with a lens, not a lens of wealth, a lens of greed, a lens of I want more than is right, but a lens of I first seek God's kingdom and His righteousness. You know what His righteousness means? His way of doing things, His way of looking at life, His way of looking at possessions, and all these things shall be added unto you. In other words, it is God that does the adding. Yes, you were the conduit that God used, but it is Him, it is He that blesses you. It's a different way of looking at life versus this rat race of an existence where we're all running around like rats. Have you ever heard about the rat race? Who's heard about the rat race? Put up your hand. Don't put up your hand with the next question. Just keep your hand down now. If you're a part of the rat race, just look around and smile. Don't put up your hand. Because what's the point? If you win the rat race, all you're ever going to be is a tired rat. I don't want to be a tired rat. I want to be God's son. Does that make sense? We're all running around like rats. I don't know. I don't know if rats do that, but they might. And so we first seek the kingdom of God as the rule in how we look at life and possessions. And by the way, how we look at people. Because because of our wrong attitude to possessions, we now look at people as if they are utilities. In other words, something to be used just like all of my possessions. Careful. The next scripture is a very hard-hitting scripture. Revelations 3.17. Jesus is speaking to the churches. And by the way, not the building. He's talking to the people in the churches. Talks to one of the churches in the last days. He says, you say I am rich. I have prospered and I need nothing. You do not realize that you are wretched, pitiable, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. You see, the way that Jesus looks at our life and the way that we look at life is 180% the opposite. See, we, we look at our life and we measure our lives as the world says we ought to measure it. And Jesus looks at us in our church and he says, you say you are rich. You say you have no need, yet you are poor, you are wretched, you are naked. Do you know why? Because we have made foolish beliefs. Foolish beliefs, the beliefs of this age, our God, instead of making God and people the most important thing in life. Yeah, I want to tell you something amazing. I don't know if you know this, but every single person sitting in this room, every single one of you, your children and your children's children until Jesus comes back, every one of you is an eternal being. That means there's no end to you, but your car will end, your bank will end, the shirt you are wearing will end, the shoes on your feet will end, the rand will end, the gold price will end. The medical aid companies will end. Hospitals will end. Sporting teams will end. But you will outlast the sun of the universe that burns in the morning sky. You and God are eternal. Never forget it. That's why God and people are the most important in His kingdom. And money is a low value. Can I get an amen? Wealth alone, you must hear me today. There's nothing wrong with having wealth. But never allow wealth to be the God of your heart. Never allow wealth to be your God. Wealth cannot satisfy you. How many rich people have you met? They have everything the world can offer them. And yet they have no peace. They have no joy. How much would you pay for peace? There are people busy killing each other right now in the Middle East for peace, so they say. How much would you pay to sleep well at night and when your head hits the pillow, you close your eyes and you sleep well without worry? 
Jesus alone is called the Prince of Peace. Wealth alone cannot satisfy your soul. Ecclesiastes 5.10, written by old King Solomon, says, The lover of money will not be satisfied with money, nor the lover of wealth with gain. Why? Because you were made to worship God, not money. You were made to worship the eternal, not the temporal. You were made to love God and people first and foremost. And because we don't live this life of simplicity, and I want to tell you this is a choice. No one's doing this to you. You choose how you live every day. Everyone in this room, besides you being eternal, has 24 hours a day like the person next to them. Every single one of you. You choose how you spend those 24 hours a day. You can choose to do it complexly or in simplicity. And in, remember we spoke last week about the big jug. Your life is like big rocks and you put all the big important pieces in first. What do we do in the world? We take the sand, we throw it in, and then we try and get the important stuff in. First, the important pieces. God and people, family, and all around that, the other stuff can fit. Your job, your education, your bank account, your medical, it all fits in there afterwards. The most important thing is God and people and family. Going to church, can I get an amen? Everything else in your life must fit around that, not you fit around the system and the pattern of this world. Can I get an amen? Number four, the enemy distracts us with reminding us And because he reminds us so well, we forget that there is an eternal realm. We forget that we are all going to die one day. And I don't want to put a heavy on you right now, but that's the truth. I buried an 87-year-old lady in this church on Friday. And you know, one thing at a funeral is you are reminded of our mortality. We are all going to leave this earth. Even the people that write books on how to stay young forever, even those people die. Even the author of those books, Staying Young, and then you go to the graveyard and it says, here lies the author of Staying Young Forever. He too died. His book also did not work on him. But wait, there's more. His second book is How to Come Back. He also did not succeed in his second book. (laughs) Hey? All these TV gurus, YouTube gurus, they want to teach us the cool stuff. There's a guy in America now, it's crazy. I don't know how old he is. He spends a million dollars a year to stay young. He looks terrible. Terrible. Revlon can help that man, but he doesn't know it. But he looks terrible. And, he, and they, they're telling him he's going to live forever. Then one day they're going to put him in a jar. Maybe go to the museum, you pay 10 rand to see him. Say, this man was going to live forever. Shock. The enemy distracts us with this life only. And we sometimes live for this life only. And we think not on the things that are above, but only on the things that are below. Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Let your minds... Be on the things that are above, not on the things that are on the earth. In other words, life is a blend of both those things. Life on the earth is important, but it is not the only thing. I want to tell you something. This part of life is where you get to work on who you are and how you grow and how you love more. Once you're on that side, you can't change who you are. Can I get an amen? It all happens here in the church now. How are we going to love forever? You don't want to be a nasty, grouchy, grumpy person in heaven. Because that's how you're going to be forever. I will make sure I'm on the other side of heaven waving. Hello! (laughs) I want to be around the friendly people. The joyful people. The people that love God with everything inside of them. There is a life to come. And here, number five, simplicity is a way of life. It's a choice. Blessed are the pure in heart. 
Now that speaks about a heart that's not complicated, not a heart that's filled with many things. That heart is filled with seeking the kingdom first. For they, says the Bible, shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Think about this world we live in. It's getting more complicated. Your cell phone, just on there, your whole life is on your phone. And it's 24-7, 365, unending, unceasing, unstopping. Your work is physical and online. And we can go on and on. I shared with you last week, there are roughly 25 different social circles that one person can connect with around their life. You need to decide what is important. I say, number one, God, church, family, and everything else fits in there from there. A couple of things for you to think on. If you are not going to slow down and simplify your life to hear God, you will all be part of rush hour, not the movie, the experience. We are all part of rush hour out there, Monday through to Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You need to slow down. You need to simplify your life to read the Bible, to pray to God, to have deep and meaningful relationships around tables and meals where you look someone in the eye and not into their cell phone and have a discussion about how they are doing and wait for the response before you answer. You need to decide to do that. Not God, not the pastor, not the church, not the government, not the president, not the political party you support, not your medical aid, not your bank, not your insurance broker, not your teacher, not your lecturer. You need to decide. You need to decide. You decide. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Second thing is what's chasing you? If we talk about rush hour, what are you chasing? What's disturbing you? What's pushing you and forcing you? Because it's as if something's chasing you. Let me teach you something about God. The devil chases. The devil tries to force. God draws and calls with gentleness and love. Have you slowed down your life enough to hear the call and the drawing in of what God is asking you to do? What's chasing you? Bring it before God. God is gentle and calls. He never forces. Even though he's God, he never forces. You know that thing where Jesus says, let the little children come to me? Do you know what that actually means? It's so crazy, the power dynamics. Children had no voice in those days. And the big bad disciples were like, you can't see Jesus. Do you have an appointment? And there's a three-year-old, five-year-old appointment. We just want to hug Jesus. And they had no voice. And I love this. The one who is the highest, the one who is the most powerful, goes to be with the lowest, goes to be with the one that has no voice. That's the power dynamics of God. Isn't that awesome? And if you will humble yourself to seek Him, you will hear His voice. You must choose simplicity of life versus the complexity of life. Versus the consumeristic nature of the world we live in. Even churches have a consumeristic nature now. So we come in here, we don't like the preaching or the pastor. So we go, nah, don't like the sermon, don't like the pastor, don't like the look. Don't like the look. I don't like the look of the building. It's like a dungeon down here, bro. Came down there, checked there was like lights. I don't smoke. I'm going to the church down the road next Sunday. In fact, I'm going there tonight. What do we do? We do that when we go shopping. I don't like the look of the store. I don't like the specials. I don't like the staff. Hey, let's go down the road. I don't like this movie. Let's change it. You decide how you live your life. You decide how you simplify and slow down. To hear God and make your life meaningful and purposeful and spirit filled with God. You decide. You decide the art of simplicity. Could you please stand? I want to pray two prayers with you. The first prayer is that we would get to realize the direct nature of how Christ lived his life. 
He simplified his life so that he would fulfill the purpose of God in his life. See, what is our excuse going to be one day? Sorry, God, I missed it because I was too busy. I missed it because I was shopping. I missed hearing you because of all my purchases. I missed hearing from you because my diary was full. I couldn't fit you in. You need to fit into my schedule. We decide today in this room if we will simplify our lives to follow the greatest voice. The greatest voice of all times is the voice of God. Nelson Mandela, even if he was here today, he's a great voice, right? Some people say yes, some people say no. But if you come to Word and Life Church, it would be a wonderful experience. Can I get an amen? I say amen. But as wonderful as Nelson was, where is Grasa? <coughs> I mean uh, the woman, not the, not the wine. <coughs> Jesus is far greater. Far greater than the Chinese premier. What would you do if the president came here today? How would you act? How would you behave? God is far higher than all those people. Far more wondrous and greater. How do you act when he pitches up? How do you receive him? How do you communicate to him? How do you talk to him? How do you call upon his name? How do you love him? When he arrives, how do you receive the master of masters, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the best of the best, the greatest of the greatest, the highest of the highest? How do you receive him? See, only you decide that. I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for myself. Father, we humble ourselves today before you. Oh, God, forgive us that we have been taken by the spirit of the age. And the spirit of the age is busyness. The rat race of life. And it's only speeding up more and more and more. The more technology we have, the less time we have. God, it was meant to make our life simpler, not more complex. And Lord, today we want to say we want to slow down enough, simplify our life enough that you come first. The church, family, deep relationships come first. The lost matter to you that we make time to share the goodness of what we have with you with those that have not the gospel. Forgive us. Forgive us, Father. We've made it about so many other things. All those things have their place, but they are not God. You alone are first. You alone are the Alpha and the Omega, we pray. Would you open up our hearts? And Father, we thank you that there is not a spirit of condemnation in this church, but a spirit of we can do better with God. We have learned today. We have learned today. We choose today how we will live. We make that decision with the power of the Holy Spirit. We say thank you in Jesus' name. Everyone who believed that said? One more prayer, and then I'm going to call Fatima up to come take up the tithe and offering. Please bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, this morning, if there's anyone who wants to give their heart to the Lord Jesus, would you just lift up your hand, and we're going to pray for you right there where you are standing. Just lift up your hand and say, please pray with me. Please pray with me. Right at the back, there's a couple of hands. There's a hand. There's a hand. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray this prayer. Say, Father God, this morning, I give my heart to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Wash me clean of all my sins. I repent. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. And he rose on the third day. He is alive in the flesh, praying for me now. As of today, I am born again. From now into eternity, I will see you face to face. In Jesus' name. 
everyone. We hope that the word has inspired you and that you'll have a super blessed week. If you'd like to give into our church, we have four ways that you can give. The page is available on our website. And if you're physically in the area, we have church every single Sunday, 8.30, 9.45 and 11 o'clock in the morning. Then again in the evening at 5 p.m. in the main auditorium. That's for our Boxwood campus. We'll see you soon, church.